Should you worry about bottlenecks? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt and welcome back to Blackbird PC Tech and our next video in our It's Not Rocket Science series. This series is focused on showing you how to build and set up an amazing PC. It's not rocket science and as you'll see throughout this series, it really is Lego. In this video, we will demystify PC bottlenecks. I'm sure you've seen someone ask if their PC has a bottleneck. The answer is always yes. You will always have a bottleneck somewhere in your system. A better question to ask is should I worry about it? As you've seen in my videos, the best way to answer any question is with data. So let's take a look at some popular games to see if it's something we should be concerned about. Before we take a look at the data, it's important to first explain what a bottleneck is. A bottleneck occurs when one component in your PC holds back the potential of a more powerful component. Although we focus on the CPU and GPU for gaming, almost any component can contribute to a bottleneck. Memory can be a bottleneck if you don't have enough. Storage can bottleneck performance if it's not fast enough, and even your display can act as a bottleneck in gaming if you have a low refresh rate monitor. A balanced PC contains components that enable each other to operate at peak efficiency. With a properly balanced PC, your components will achieve the level of performance they were designed for, without any one component being over or underutilized, resulting in a better overall user experience. To understand how a bottleneck can impact a system, it's important to understand the interplay between the CPU and GPU. The the CPU is responsible for calculating operations like physics, audio, non-player AI, position, and sending rendering instructions to the GPU. These instructions contain everything the GPU needs in order to know what to render, including shaders, textures, and other visual data. These instructions are then executed by the GPU, resulting in the image you see on screen. If the GPU is rendering these instructions faster than the CPU can provide them, the GPU will remain idle until the next set of instructions is ready. This can result in fewer frames per second being rendered than what the GPU is capable of, creating a CPU bottleneck in that the performance of the GPU is being constrained by the limitations of the CPU. The same can happen in reverse. If a powerful CPU is sending instructions to the weaker GPU faster than the GPU can render, the capabilities of the CPU are being limited by the slower speeds of the GPU, hence a GPU bottleneck would exist. So how do you determine if you have a bottleneck and what should you do about it? Let's answer the second part of this question later in the video and focus first first on how to determine if you actually have a bottleneck. One thing most people typically do is search the term bottleneck on Google. What comes up are bottleneck calculators. These calculators from companies like PC Builds and CPU Agent claim to allow you to predict the bottleneck by selecting your CPU, GPU, screen resolution, and game. They are free to use, however, they do have a lot of pop-up ads and a lot of affiliate links to places like Amazon that are conveniently linked to the recommendations from the tool. These tools are easy to use and require minimal effort to get a quick answer, but are they accurate? Let's find out. To help answer this question and explore bottlenecks in a little more detail, I'm going to focus specifically on CPU and GPU utilization in games. To generate this data, I plan to use my two open bench tables, one AMD and one Intel based, together with my Falcon Northwest Talon to generate data for prior gen hardware. The primary components for each test system consist of, for the Falcon Northwest Talon, the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, and the GPU is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. For the AMD bench table, the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D, and the GPU is a Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX 7900 XDX VaporX. And for the Intel bench table, the CPU is an Intel Core i7 14700K, and the GPU is a Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 4090 Amp Extreme Aero. A full component list for each system is contained in the description together with affiliate links. For these tests, I selected three modern games that I knew would stress the CPU and GPU. These include Cyberpunk 2077, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I tested each game on each system at three different resolutions. However, at each resolution, I purposely changed the settings. At 4K, I wanted to load the GPU as much as possible, so I used ultra settings. While at 1080p, I wanted to load the CPU as much as possible, so I chose low settings. I recorded the CPU utilization, GPU utilization, and maximum CPU per thread utilization during each benchmark run using HW Info. 
The reason I added the last parameter is that although these games are all multi-threaded, they tend to load one or two cores much more heavily than the rest, which is really helpful to see when looking at bottlenecks. For Modern Warfare 3, I also captured the in-game benchmark performance summary chart, something I wish every game provided. With the test systems ready, let's check the results and compare them against the PC Build's bottleneck calculator estimate for each game and each resolution. Let's start with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. All of these charts show utilization on the y-axis versus benchmark runtime on the x-axis. For the 5900X 3080 Ti system at 4K Ultra settings, it's clear that the GPU is fully loaded and therefore is limiting performance. The in-game performance summary confirms this by stating that the GPU is the cause of the bottleneck 100% of the time. But the PC Builds calculator states the opposite. The disk configuration has, in its words, 46.8% of CPU bottleneck. I'm not exactly sure what the calculator percentage actually means because if it meant percentage of time, then that would imply that the GPU is a bottleneck 53.2% of the time. But it clearly states the CPU is a bottleneck. Perhaps it's stating a probability, but this is a deterministic problem. So regardless, the only thing that is clear is that it makes absolutely no sense. Let's see how it does at a different resolution. For this system at 1440p balance settings, the GPU is still highly loaded and limiting performance. The in-game performance summary confirms this again by stating that the GPU is the cause of the bottleneck 97% of the time. Yet the PC builds calculator continues to provide wrong information by stating this configuration has 56.3% of CPU bottleneck. That's two strikes. Let's see how it does at 1080p. At 1080p basic settings, the CPU utilization has increased. However, the GPU is still highly loaded at 96% and is therefore still the primary component limiting game performance. The in-game performance summary confirms this by stating that the GPU is the cause of the bottleneck 80% of the time. So what does the PC builds calculator say? You guessed it. It messes up again by stating that this configuration has 60.3% of CPU bottleneck. Strike three for the calculator. So maybe it simply isn't good for this combination of components. For the 7800X3D RX 7900XDX system at 4K Ultra settings, the GPU is fully loaded at almost 100% and is clearly the bottleneck. The in-game performance summary confirms this by stating that the GPU is the cause of the bottleneck 100% of the time. But again, the PC builds calculator completely screws up by stating that the CPU is a bottleneck at 53%. That's not good. Let's see if this trend continues for the next two resolutions and settings. Same result at 1440p balance settings. The system is GPU bound, but the calculator says it is CPU bound. And again, at 1080p basic settings, the system is still GPU bound, but the calculator says it's CPU bound. So perhaps the calculator simply doesn't work well for AMD based systems. For the 14700K RTX 4090 system at 4K ultra settings, the GPU is highly loaded again and is clearly the bottleneck. The in-game performance summary confirms this by stating that the GPU is the cause of the bottleneck 93% of the time. But again, the PC builds calculator completely screws up by stating that this configuration has 52% of CPU bottleneck. Hmm, I'm starting to see a trend and it's not good for the calculator. Let's see if this trend continues for the next two resolutions and settings. At 1440p balance settings, the system is actually really well balanced, with the GPU utilization and max CPU per thread utilization almost equal. The in-game performance summary confirms by stating that the CPU is the cause of the bottleneck 51% of the time and the GPU is the cause of the bottleneck 49% of the time. That's awesome, right? Not so fast. The PC Builds calculator predicts that this configuration has 60.4% CPU bottleneck by stating that the 14700K is too weak for the RTX 4090. Not good. Let's check the final test for this game and system. At 1080p basic settings, we finally generate a clear CPU bottleneck, with the max CPU per thread much higher than the GPU utilization. The in-game performance summary confirms this by stating that the CPU is the cause of the bottleneck 95% of the time. How about the PC builds calculator? It finally gets the cause of the bottleneck right, but the percentage is much lower at 64%. Not sure what it is measuring, but that just seems wrong. Clearly, if you guess the same result every time, then you're bound to get it right eventually. I went through these charts in detail because I wanted to show you just how poorly these calculators perform. You may be asking yourself if it's just the game. Perhaps the calculators aren't good at predicting performance for Call of Duty 3. So let's take a quick look at the data for Cyberpunk 2077 and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Two very different games with different game engines. I'm pretty sure you know what's coming, but I think it's important to be thorough in this analysis and for you to see the data for yourself.
As you can see, the bottleneck calculator had an accuracy in these tests of only 20%. To put that into perspective, you could flip a coin and generate a much better result. So these calculators are absolutely worthless. In virtually every situation, they appear to predict that the CPU is the bottleneck. Apparently, they are simply there to sell advertisements and push you to buy a new CPU through their affiliate links. My very strong recommendation is to stop using them immediately. They spread misinformation, are complete garbage, and should be avoided at all costs. So what should you do instead? Run your game and use an application like HW Info to look at your component utilization. I know that requires more effort than using a calculator, but if you really want to know what is limiting the performance of your system, this is the best way to do it. If you do find that you have a bottleneck, what should you do about it? To best answer this question, we need to first ask ourselves a different question. What is our objective as a PC gamer? Typically, that would be to game smoothly at the highest possible settings. For competitive online gamers, maybe you might want to adjust that to be game at the highest possible frame rate and lowest input latency. Regardless of what type of games you play, the one objective gamers shouldn't have is to maximize processor usage. As long as your system can provide the result you are looking for, then it really doesn't matter if the GPU or CPU is working harder. Now, I'm not saying you should aim to pair an Intel 2700K with an NVIDIA 4090, but the term bottleneck is being used to scare people into buying hardware they simply don't need, which is why I wanted to make this video. If you start to notice that your CPU is more heavily loaded in the games you play or the apps you use, then it might be time to consider a GPU and or monitor upgrade. Whatever you do, please stop worrying about bottlenecks. Simply focus on your game and enjoy it. In today's video, we demystified PC bottlenecks bottlenecks. We discovered that bottleneck calculators are completely worthless and only exist to generate ad and affiliate revenue for the site owners. If you want to understand how your system is performing, then the best course of action is to download free monitoring software and take a look at CPU GPU utilization during your game and or application. This is not, however, something that most people should be concerned about. If your system is running well and you achieve great performance at your desired resolution and settings, then my advice is to forget about bottlenecks and enjoy your game. Our goal with the It's Not Rocket Science series is to demystify the build and setup process to show you just how easy it is. Hopefully we did that today with this video. As you can see, it's really not rocket science, it's Lego. Thank you for watching the next video in the It's Not Rocket Science how-to series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as I delve deeper into every aspect of PC building. Please also comment and offer suggestions on future topics that you would like to see me address. Bye for now.